My name is Ben Stan. I'm chef at Salado Restaurant and Bar here in Good River. And I'm going to do a brief demonstration that uh, deals with chanterelle mushrooms. Really the, uh, one of the delicacies of our region here in Oregon. So uh, chanterelles have a spring and fall season. These are obviously fall chanterelles as it's the fall season. And it's actually the tail end of that season when it gets too cold, the mushrooms will stop producing. Uh, and so these mushrooms, the classic characteristics of a chanterelle is, um, for a yellow chanterelle I should say, is this uh, yellow or orange color. And they have a cap that is broad that curls over at the edge. And then they all have fins that come down from beneath the cap and they end just where the stem meets. And these mushrooms have been cleaned a little bit by the uh, forager who collected them for us. But we go and clean them again and I'm going to demonstrate what we do. So, Many of these here have little bits of wood and, and uh, debris, forest debris on them. And we start with just a typical small firm bristled paintbrush. And we use that to brush off any of the debris that's found within. And I work through the gills. And as you can see, as you may be able to see on the uh, linen here, that's what's being brushed off. It's just a little bit of that forest debris. That's as much as really we can hope for in uh, cleaning the mushrooms. They absorb water, and so they can't be submerged in water to wash them as you would think of with another vegetable, for example. Um, and so their cleaning takes place just in this process right here. And this one's fairly dirty, so I'm going to give it a pretty vigorous scrub. Once we've cleaned off all of that debris, then we portion the mushrooms so that they can be sautéed. And we do that simply by hand. We tear them in pieces down the length of the mushroom stem. And chanterelles will break up pretty easily in that way. And these are uh, pieces that I like to think of as small enough that you would put it in your mouth in one bite. And that's suitable for sautéing. Then we're going to saute the mushrooms. I like to use fresh herbs and olive oil and for herbs particularly thyme and a little bit of diced shallot. These mushrooms get sauteed in a hot pan and then they can either be eaten right away as in with a pasta, tossed with fresh pasta, or an alternative would be cooked and then preserved. You want to save them for later on in the winter season. Once they're cooked and cooled, they can be bagged in a Ziploc bag and frozen, and they're relatively stable. If you do freeze them, what you want to do is ensure that there's a minimum of air in the Ziploc bag so that they have um, no exposure and no chance to uh, crystallize the freezer. Uh, then when you warm them up, you can use them just like you would if you had to go. That's the job for mushrooms. Okay, so now we're going to cook the mushrooms that we just prepared. And so we'll start off with this very hot saute pan. And uh, we use a blend of canola oil and uh, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Straight olive oil, expensive, and also uh, just going to impart too much flavor. Canola oil uh, can take a high temperature without burning as well. So, pretty generous amount of olive oil in the pan. And then, one of the most important things is not to overload the pan, so we're going to put a scant covering of, mar of mushrooms in the bottom of the pan. The idea is that every mushroom should be touching the bottom of the pan, not suspended off of the edge of the pan. Then we use seasoning with salt, fresh pepper, a little bit of chopped chives, and some fresh thyme. I'll use a wooden spoon just to make sure that they're all touching the pan and browning slightly. There you have it.